Wollaston and Bolton Junior School is on the fringe of Derby in a new housing area. It replaced the village school which had served the educational needs of the district for over a hundred years. It's five to nine and the children are arriving. Each day begins with assembly when the whole school meets in a corporate act of worship in which the children take a major part. Very often, hymns are accompanied by the recorder band. Readings are introduced, as well as prayers, written by the children. The school is divided into four houses, Knight, Fontaine, Hillary and Sergeant. At the beginning of each school year, house captains and vice captains are elected. The children make speeches in support of the candidates of their choice. Election addresses are repaired and voting takes place. By this means, we hope to convey some idea of how a democratic system of government works. After assembly, the classes go to their own rooms and the first activity of the day is the writing of individual diaries and the bringing up to date of records. Letter writing is a feature of the work in English. The morning mail is being distributed by the postman of the week, usually a first-year child. This task helps him to gain confidence in finding his way about the large and rambling building. The letters which Christopher is reading may be from children in other schools at home or they may be from the other side of the globe. This helps geography, as well as written English. We have a limited problem with backwardness in reading, and the less able readers are given daily individual attention by their teacher, while the more capable make use of the class and school libraries to read for pleasure. Our three librarians are on duty from one to half past each day, and any child in the school may exchange books during this period. The reference library is always open, and the children borrow books as and when they need them. Our alphabetical subject catalogue is of great value, and as the books are classified by the Dewey system, children who can use this library should have little difficulty in finding their way about bigger libraries and in using the magazines which are there. We try to make our school magazine, the Orleston and Bolton Clarion, mirror what is going on in the school and also give publicity to the best original prose and verse written by the children. Drama is an integral part of most subjects we study. This play is about the boyhood of Jesus. It was written by one of the teachers for the purpose of introducing to the children in an interesting way the background against which our Lord grew up and its effect on his later life. These are some of the characters in a play written and acted by the children to depict events in the life of James Cook. The costumes and totem pole are homemade too. How has maths teaching changed in recent years? We think children must have an understanding of the value of numbers, and when one of our hives of bees perished, we took this opportunity for extending their knowledge. How can we make 50? How can we count all the bees in the hive? First year children are gaining practice in weighing and measuring. We believe that there must be much practical work of this kind before children are familiar enough with units and processes involved to work with symbols alone. The shop gives children experience in using weights and measures and money. Len and his companion are learning to, about time by setting their clocks to playtime and to dinner time. How much more interesting when the substance is being weighed are for the very practical purpose of making sweets. Problems had to be solved when we measured Orleston Church before making a plan and a scale model of it. Stephen is using a homemade chronometer to calculate the vertical heights so that we can model the tower. 
The A6 passed at the edge of the playing field. So one weekend, relays of children noted the number of vehicles of different types going to and from Derby. After the information had been sort started out, statistics were compiled and the results were shown graphically. Within easy reach of our school, we can find evidence of most periods of history from the Bronze Age onwards. We make use of these whenever possible as a starting point for our lessons by taking children out of the classroom to the site in order to whet their appetites for more knowledge. Their enthusiasm is directed to sources of further information and the results are recorded. Children often revisit the places with their parents and pass on to them the knowledge gained in school. Our county is famous for its beautiful rivers and limestone dales, where there is much to explore. In Beresford Dale, we met the River Warden and talked to her about her work. We invite people with special knowledge to pass it on to us, and the Vicar of Eam showed us the plague register and told us the story of his village. Then we went on to look at the village stocks and the plague cottage. John is measuring the distance we are likely to have to walk on one of our expeditions. As part of the preparation, we always make before a journey. After an expedition, records are made, often involving the use of books in the reference library to identify things we have seen. What sort of a fungus is this? Well, here are some of the flowers we collected and identified in one of our expeditions. Children keep their own records each journey in carefully illustrated topic books. And working in groups, they also produce wall charts, like this one, made to show some of the flowers we identified on a walk through Dovedale in spring. Parents sometimes accompany us on journeys outside the county. Such visits were to the Seven Wild Fowl Trust and the London Zoo. John is at work on a frieze, which was made to record our impressions of what we saw on a visit to Chester. Here at the Derbyshire Farm Institute is a starting point for a study of dairy farming. There is always a special reason for these visits and the children are primed beforehand what to observe and usually take with them a questionnaire. We are conducted round by one of the lecturers who explains what is happening and answers many questions. To learn something about the growing of cereals, the Farm Institute was good enough to arrange a day's threshing for us. These children are rubbing corn in their hands and blowing away the chaff to illustrate the principle of the threshing machine. The students and workers deal with the awkward questions they have to answer with patience and good humour. Lindsay is trying to estimate the weight of a bale of straw. The, the estimates the children made were checked by using a balance. We were allowed to take a sheaf of wheat back to school. In the playground, the children are threshing and winnowing it to get rid of the chaff. We tried to grind the wheat with stones, but were not very successful. So we had to do it with a mincing machine. The school cooks showed the girls how to make bread in the school kitchen. It was much coarser than the bread we buy from the baker, but it had a nutty flavour and tasted very good. How were you taught to read maps? We decided to make a map of the village of Willington. First, the children learned how to use a compass. 
Stephen is sketching the course of the canal at Willington, we were also able to see most of the common features to be found on ordnance maps, like the level crossing where we were tempted to linger for a time. Back at school, the children set to work to produce a reasonably accurate map of the village. One of the final efforts is pinned up for comparison besides an ordnance map of the district. The children had to find a way to measure the length of streets and lanes. This provided a good deal of work in maths, since we decided to use a bicycle wheel with a paint mark on the rim. But first, the class did some practical work to establish the relationship between the radius, diameter, and circumference of circular objects of various sizes. The results were compared, and the children learned that the relationship is a constant one. Quite difficult mechanical length sums were involved in multiplying the number of revolutions of the bicycle wheel by its circumference. When we joined the Derbyshire School's Meteorological Society, we decided we must have more reliable data to exchange with other schools. Should we buy the instruments or make as many as we could? Well, some of the children began to make instruments in their craft lessons, and Graham is at work on the weather vane. After several trials, we found that a bicycle hub served our purpose best. While Stephen and Graham were digging holes for the posts, quite a lot of trials were going on to produce the anemometer. We found that plastic cups mounted on cycle spokes fixed to the ball race of a hub gave the best results. When the instruments were finished and working to our satisfaction, some of the boys decided to use another craft lesson to put up a fence and paint everything within reach white. Usually, the instruments are read at 9 a.m., but on certain days, more frequent readings are taken. During the holidays, children living near the school come in daily to keep the record. We record maximum and minimum temperature, humidity, rainfall, and wind direction and speed. Charts are kept in the classroom, and these on the wall are some of them. About eight years ago, we made a pond. What are the bees doing on the stone at the edge of the water? Children show a great interest in the minute creatures which can be examined with a simple microscope. Our bird table brings many winter visitors within view of the classroom windows. Again, the children's observation is used to direct them to suitable reference books. And children with unusual pets are encouraged to bring them to school and talk about them to their classmates. What does the keeping of such pets as the hamster teach children? What can chicken keeping contribute to experience in the basic subjects? While tricks can be kept in the classroom, plenty of mathematics is involved in working out the average increase in weight and comparing it with the average consumption of food. In the early stages, the chickens are kept in a large box under a low-power infrared lamp, and constant temperature readings are made. Well, a sparrowhawk, which killed itself against the window, provided another topic for investigation. When they were old enough, the chickens were put out of doors in a hay box, which was made during a craft lesson. Several boys and girls came back after school to make this pen in which the chickens were kept later on and where interest was maintained over many weeks as the chickens grew up, tended and sheltered by their guardians. A good deal of English, arithmetic and craft, as well as biology, resulted from our chicken keeping. Another pursuit which holds interest all the year round is beekeeping. 
We started with one hive six years ago and now have three. Here, children are examining frames and gaining confidence in handling them. The youngest children show a keen interest in what is going on, but the handling of bees is confined to children in their last year who wish to have such close contact with them. The teaching comes in pointing out types of cells and the activities of good bee husbandry. The queen has been identified and here is being pointed out. Matthew is assembling new frames of foundation wax. Like the making of the chicken pen, this is a useful form of craft with a real purpose. Providing operations are performed with precaution at the right time, children soon lose any nervousness they may have had, and it's now a tradition in school that bees can be safely handled and that being stung is a mark of bad bee husbandry. During summer, we watch an observation hive in one of the corridor windows. Michael and Kathleen are removing capped frames of honey from the hive for extraction. The method of handling frames taught when they were being removed from the hive has now become second nature, and you can see how easily and confidently it is carried out. The cells are decapped before being put into the extractor. A number of calculations in weight and money are involved when the honey is finally run into jars and sold to the children. Notes and records are kept and are there made while the practical work goes on. And these are some of them of varying flight activity under different life conditions. Any natural phenomenon is used as the starting point of an inquiry. A solar eclipse is being observed with apparatus made in the classroom. More formal work in science is usually done in small groups, and these children are performing experiments on sound. Each group has its own apparatus, a card of instructions, and a notebook in which to write observations. After one experiment has been completed, the group moves on to the next table and performs the experiment there. Although guidance on how the results should be recorded is given on the instruction cards, the observations and the language used are the children's own. When all the experiments have been done, the teacher checks the children's observations to make sure that there have been no misunderstandings, and then from the accumulated evidence, conclusions are drawn. Television programs and films are used to illustrate the children's work when opportunity offers. John and David are making lighthouses in papier mache. This group is making models of Viking ships. The Swiss village illustrates classwork in geography. Sewing and knitting is done by the older girls, but sometimes boys use needles, while girls help in crafts more traditionally, the preserves of the boys. Frequently, craft lessons are used in this way to make models for other lessons but traditional crafts are not neglected. Is this work with balsa wood, craft or history? Although no formal instruction is given, children are encouraged to use media such as wood, hardboard and plasterboard to make models. Making models like this helped children to see how our immediate ancestors tended to behave. And no doubt some parallels are drawn. The youngest 
children do a good deal of modeling in clay, and although we have an electric kiln, this class decided to build its own kiln out of doors and fire its models with sawdust, which proved remarkably effective. By chance, all the operations here and in the following sequences show boys at work with attractive results. Yet much of our best pottery owes most to girls who often show a particular gift for invention and decoration. Smith decorated pottery is particularly suitable for juniors. Their direct, fearless boldness gives the wearer the vigor and charm which is often absent when more control and technical skill have been acquired. Slip decorated clay is being applied to hump models made previously by the children. William is preparing to throw a pot on the wheel. This is an exciting day in the young potter's life, particularly if he succeeds in giving the inert mass of clay form, character and some recognisable personality. David is bringing a load of pots from the biscuit kiln to be glazed. Majolica ware is being painted by these children. Richard is making a design on tiles which later will be glazed and fired. David is pouring glaze over a slipware dish. Records of our pottery activities are written and illustrated in art lessons. Books for my reference library provide additional information about processes, recipes for glazes and so on. We borrow and examine as many pots as we can and are fortunate in being able to draw on the Derbyshire Museum Service collection. This group is discussing some such pots. In the first year, percussion band work started in the infant school is continued. After time patterns have become familiar, children are ready to go on to recorders. First year children are playing from music accompanied by teacher on the piano. Quite a number of our children are encouraged to progress to more difficult instruments and may even play during assembly. Recorders and percussion band are often used to accompany country dancing. Whenever the weather makes it possible, physical education takes place out of doors. In bad weather, one of the halls is used, but we prefer the extra room for movement available outside, where we can also use our climbing apparatus. School sports take the form of inter-house competitions, consisting chiefly of games and races, and every year one house wins the trophy. Our third and fourth year children are swimming enthusiasts, and many obtain certificates before they leave us. Beginners use the rail to gain confidence in the water. In each group of 48, one teacher instructs beginners, while the other coaches the more proficient. Margaret and Anne are practicing life-saving. Boys are keen on football, and the girls play stool ball and netball. Children who stay at school for dinner are encouraged to play games and pursue their hobbies on the field afterwards. There is no more welcome visitor to school than Nurse Abley, who may come to test vision or see children for some other reason. The school doctor is making one of her routine medical examinations, after which she and David's mother compare notes. There are many occasions when the children's parents are invited to school, but once a year we stage an exhibition of work 
to which mothers and fathers and other school friends are invited. This is one such exhibition where the infants have come to look round. There is a very close link between our school and the infants department at one end and the secondary modern and grammar schools at the other. Our school meals are cooked on the premises and the family service provides opportunity for social training. The teachers dine with the children and by this means an easy and formal supervision is maintained. Some films seen recently have created the impression that teachers have to take violent invasive action at the end of the school day to avoid a mad stampede for freedom. We don't think our children would fit into this picture, although, as you see, they play together with vigor as well as confidence. We hope they have been helped to make an environment in which, in cooperation with their parents, we are able to develop their character and intellectual qualities as far as possible.